Then you and I are both dietitians. It goes without saying, we get really giddy and excited when we start thinking about eating well, healthy eating, healthy lifestyles. Um, but, you know, let's just think for a minute about, I suppose, the evidence, if you like. Can changes to your diet really make a difference to your cholesterol levels? Yes, diets and a healthy lifestyle can have a big impact on your cholesterol levels, um, but this will vary from individual to individual. It, it does um, depend on a number of factors, the magnitude by which a diet can play a role, and that can be due to, um, for example, what is your cholesterol levels? How high are they to begin with? What's your starting diet like? How many changes, positive changes, can you make? Um, and how long can you keep these changes up for? And also genetics plays a, um, a, a role in how we respond to diet. But when you look at the studies, studies um, have shown um, on a healthy diet can lower cholesterol by about 10 to 30 percent, which actually 30 percent is quite significant. Well, I mean, that's as much as any drug would be able to do. So it's, it's no mean thing. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Well, let's get down to the nitty gritty then. Talk us through some of the main issues or the main things that we need to think about when it comes to diet and cholesterol. Well, the dietary recommendations for cholesterol management, simply put, is to cut down on our bad fat or our saturated fat and have more of the healthy fats and more fibre. But we don't eat nutrients in isolation. We don't have a saturated fat sandwich. We eat them as foods. So where's saturated fat found? It's found in uh, red meat, processed fatty meats, full fat dairy, butter, lard, cakes, chocolates, pastries, puddings, coconut oil, palm oil. So these are the types of um, foods we should be watching the amount that we eat because they contribute quite a large amount of saturated fat. The healthy fats, the unsaturated fats, are found in things like vegetable oils, so sunflower oil, safflower oil, olive oil, rapeseed oil, um, as well as oily fish, nuts, seeds, olives, avocados. Um, and then the fibre, we find those in things like whole grain cereals, fruits, vegetables, pulses and beans. But again, we don't eat foods in isolation. We eat them as an overall dietary pattern. Mm. And the dietary, the evidence for the dietary patterns, the ones that lower the risk of cardiovascular disease, all have the same foundations. They contain good sources of whole grains, fruits, vegetables, pulses, beans, oily fish, healthy oils, and minimal amounts of sort of red and processed meat and processed foods that are high in sort of saturated fat, salt and sugar. So, I mean, that kind of Mediterranean style diet, we don't need to do extremes. We don't all need to become vegan, but we can look at inc increasing those plant foods, increasing those whole grains um, and generally focusing on as many different types of plant foods as we can. Um, and those can be done quite gradually. I mean, if people want to learn how to do this, you can join uh, us in, in our Back to Basics program that literally takes you through all of those principles on a, in a gradual process and allows you to really build those into your existing diet. So this isn't radical. This is about building lifelong lifestyle plans and patterns rather than quick fixes, fads and um, pseudoscience, I suppose. We are, though, often hearing claims about certain foods, specific foods um, and menopause symptoms. And I guess quite often claims that are really not based on science at all when it comes to cholesterol. Uh, is there any science supporting some of the foods that we hear are positively helpful at reducing cholesterol levels? Yes, yeah, so there's, there's four cholesterol lowering foods that appear to have benefits above and beyond a heart healthy diet. Um, and these have been studied in a diet called the portfolio diet. So these foods include nuts, soya, um, viscous fibres, so the fibres that are found in oats and barley, um, and also plant stan stanols and sterols. Now, all of these foods 
have a different uh, mechanism in lowering cholesterol. So by including all of those foods into the diet, they seem to have a cumulative action on lowering cholesterol. And when people follow the portfolio diet really rigorously, they can, uh, it's been shown to lower cholesterol by about 30%, which is the same as a first generation statin. So it is, that's a very rigid, strict diet, but that's not to say you can still adopt some of those principles. You can still get the benefits by including sort of lesser amounts, but by having more of those foods, you're getting the benefits. And it's interesting, isn't it? Over time, the messaging has changed. You know, when probably when we trained as dietitian, a lot, lots of the things we were taught were about removing things from the diet to manage cholesterol. That's all changed now. We know much more. Yes. And it's actually quite often about adding things in. Absolutely. And I think, again, maybe it's showing our age, Nigel, mm. um, but it was kind of you, you advised on a low-fat diet. Well, it's not a low-fat diet. We're actually, it's about reducing the saturated yeah. fat, but including more of the healthy fat. So as you say, it's about what you can add in rather than what you can take away. Yeah, absolutely. Now, if somebody decided, let's imagine someone's been, they've had their... Uh, uh, blood test at a, the GP or through a pharmacist, they've had those results explained to them really carefully and they've decided, I would really like to see what I can do with this, um, with lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, is this the sort of thing that they're going to see a result in the first week? How long do they need to do these lifestyle changes before it would be reasonable to expect a result? Well, typically we would say give it three months because this enables you to make sustainable changes, to build on those changes and make them sort of long lasting. And in that three months to see whether or not diet and lifestyle has had an impact on cholesterol. Okay. But I mean, I've certainly heard women in our community say they have made changes and they've seen results more quickly. But in general, yeah. Three months is what we're looking for. Absolutely. And as, well, as I was saying earlier, it's, there are many factors that can influence how diet, you respond to diet. So if you've got a higher cholesterol or if you've made a lot of changes, um, if you've included so foods fortified with plant stanols and sterols, um, that's been shown within two to three weeks if you take them regularly, consistently and at the amounts that are recommended can bring cholesterol down between sort of 10 to 12%. So it really does depend on what's been included, what's been changed in the diet to determine what the effect is. Yeah, absolutely. Now, again, there will be a smallish group of people who, and I rip, my heart goes out to these guys, they really throw themselves in to the lifestyle changes. They embrace it fully. They really want to take responsibility and off they go with changing their diet, getting more active, managing their stress, and still the cholesterol is just really persistent and doesn't move. Um, are there any choices left open to them? Absolutely. It's, 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 it's so important to get that cholesterol under control. And it, you, you might have the best diet and healthy lifestyle, and it's not lowering cholesterol. And so there are other interventions and there is medication that is available. And that would be a discussion that you'd need to have with your healthcare professional. And they will be looking at not just your cholesterol, but your overall risk of cardiovascular disease as well. So it should be a discussion that you have with, with your healthcare professional. Yeah. But I mean, I think the issue is there's choice and there are options. And this is something that I mean, the bottom line comes down to if now you understand this as, as one of the risk factors, everybody can go and get that checked. It's easy to understand those results and the options to take action are really varied. They don't have to be life changing, mm. but my goodness, they can be life prolonging yes. if you really embrace them and put them into practice. It's been so helpful. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you.